Hi guys, uh, wanted to do a kind of a companion video to one I did. I did one on minute of angle here uh, a day or so ago and just uploaded it. And I want to do a companion video. I'm going to kind of do a series on the whole putting long range shooting together. But this is about understanding bullet drop. Uh, this is absolutely not about uh, trying to do the math and all that. This is just generalization so you understand because there's some misconceptions when it comes to bullet drop. Uh, it is very simple, very generic. It is not meant to get you to do the math. It's not meant to break the terms down. This is generalizations. Uh, the disclaimer is I stole a bunch of pictures off the internet so you know, if you see a picture you've seen somewhere else, it's theirs, not mine. Uh, so uh, let's get into it. First thing we need to do is go through some of the terms, terms and the definitions to help you understand what we're talking about. First one being line of sight. Uh, straight line out to infinity is, rep is represented by the scope's reticle. The sight plane formed when the front and the rear sights are aligned. That is where you're looking. The line of sight is if you pick a point at whatever distance, 100, 200, 500, 10 million yards, whatever, and you look at it, that line from your eyeball to the point you're looking at is our line of sight. The bullet path is the arc or trajectory of the bullet relative to the line of sight. Line of departure, another perfectly straight line, this one running down the center of the bore of the barrel out to infinity. Uh, so if you could draw a straight line out of the barrel of your gun and hold that gun, that, that line would draw straight the whole way to the stars or the moon or Mars or wherever it goes. Drop. That's the actual drop of the bullet relative to the line of departure. Okay. Sectional de density is the weight of the bullet in pounds to the square of its diameter in inches. Uh, this is talking about the grain of the bullet. Uh, the only, I, I put it in here as kind of to get you thinking about it before we move up to uh, into the other videos on figuring it out. Right now you don't really even have to worry about sectional, de sectional density. Uh, and the ballistic coefficient, uh, which is the bullet's effect effectiveness at overcoming air resistance during flight. Again, those are two terms that you're not going to spend a lot of time learning about in this video. Those are kind of just to get you thinking about them. I'll talk about them a little bit, but those will come more into play later on in another video. Uh, first, let's talk about the actual bullet drop. There's a misconception or a... That's the word I want to use. There's one big argument I always see on gun range that... Once the bullet leaves the barrel, the bullet drops and drops and drops and it never... And, and some other people say that when the bullet leaves the barrel, there's a rise after the bullet leaves the barrel. And you're both kind of right. Uh, the true answer is once the bullet leaves the barrel, it drops to earth at a rate of 32 feet per second, no exceptions. The rise is actually that people say happens after you pull the trigger the bull right the bullet rises it does but that ha that's in due in reference to the line of departure if you held that gun perfectly horizontal well I'm getting ahead of myself but if you hold it perfectly horizontal with the earth for a flat whatever distance there will never ever ever be any muzzle the bullet will never rise above the muzzle never but if you in, introduce an arc to the gun then the bullet will actually cross your line of sight twice but we'll get into that here in a minute uh, again this video is not going to teach you how to turn figure out external ballistics that'll be in a later video uh, we're talking about what the bullet does after it leaves the gun and how you can affect that as a shooter uh, this is like I said it's not intended to uh, 
try and get you to understand or do the math or whatever. But the first thing you need to understand is that the bullet will always begin to drop at the moment it leaves the barrel. It will drop at a rate of 30, 32 feet per second to the ground 100% of the time, no exceptions. That is the effect of gravity on mass is it 32 feet per second it drops. No exceptions. Uh, so if all bullets drop at 32 feet per second, why do some rifles shoot flatter than others? This is actually a pretty easy thing to figure out once you understand what's going on once the bullet leaves the barrel. Uh, the reason is velocity. When the round leaves the gun, all bullets that drop to the earth at 32 feet per second. Physics can't stop it. However, there are a number of steps we can take to overcome that problem. The first one being to throw the bullet at a higher velocity or faster speed. Therefore, the bullet will cover more ground in the time it takes that bullet to, to travel to earth at 32 feet per second. So, when you hear people talking about flatter shooting guns, the bullet is not dropping any slower. It is just covering more ground faster. So if you have, <clears throat> well, we'll use my demonstration here. Imagine a drag race where both cars were shot off remotely after 10 seconds. Two cars line up, leave the starting line at the exact same moment. One going faster gets further in that 10 second time period. So, if you have one moving at 100 miles an hour and another one moving at 200 miles an hour and they both get 10 seconds to travel, the car going faster is going to cover essentially twice the distance, barring, and I'm not getting into the logics of rates of acceleration and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. This is just generalization. If they hit the starting line at exactly 100 and 200 miles an hour at the exact same moment, and that, and that started our 10 second time, so they're already at speed when they both cross the starting line at the exact same moment. For the sake of this video, um, like I said, I don't want to get into rates of acceleration and all that stuff. That's way more in depth than what you need to be to understand this. So, for all intents and purposes, if they leave the line at speed, 100 mile an hour, 200 miles an hour, in that 10 second time frame, it is going, the car going 200 miles an hour is going to cover twice the distance as the car going 100 miles an hour. Just simple logic, right? Same concept of these flatter shooting rifles. It's not that the bullet is not dropping to earth at 32 feet per second. It is. It's just in the time it takes that bullet to drop that 32 feet per second uh, for whatever distance it currently is off the ground, the bullet covers more distance. hope that makes sense. Uh, so what you have to understand is if we held the gun perfectly horizontal or flat to the ground, at exactly 32 feet off the ground and we had a muzzle velocity of exactly 3200 feet per second and you pulled the trigger the bullet would travel only 3200 feet until it hit the ground 32 320 feet per second out 32 feet per second down so to over, overcome this problem we're going to do introduce an arc or minute of angle to the bullet I've done another video on minute of angle uh, if you haven't watched that, it's actually, it might do you some good to... Oh, it really doesn't matter. You can watch it after this video. But uh need to go check out the minute of angle video. It breaks it down in simple, easy to understand terms like I'm trying to do here to help you wrap your mind around all this. But to overcome the problem, we're going to introduce an arc to the bullet. You do that by elevating the barrel of the gun in a, man in a manner to compensate for the effect of gravity on the bullet. So if you know that bullet's going to, you can do the math and figure out what the bullet drop is going to be at any given distance. And what you need to do is figure out how much you have to tilt the gun or arc the gun to compensate for where that bullet's going to drop. This is just the concepts of long range shooting. It's not hard. It's not difficult. There's actually computers out there now that will do it all for you. 
but you need to understand why it's working before you go plugging stuff into computers. Uh, once you put that arc on a bullet, it will cross your line of sight, which I remember when I said line of sights from your eye to the point you're looking at twice with an arc. Once on the way up and once on the way back down. That point, that way back down, that where it lands on the way back down is a zero on a rifle. Uh, I'm not getting into how to calculate that, like I said, but basically, give or take, if you had a 200 yard zero in this, as we do in this figure, uh, with the average hunting rifle and the average mid range height on that, would cross your line of sight at about 100 yards. So, on the way up, it's going to cross at 100 yards, and the way back down, it's going to land at 200 yards that is your point of zero. Uh, I know you've heard people say that if you sight your gun in at 25 yards you could have a hundred yard zero. There, that is a pretty good general rule of thumb but there's some things you have to understand with that too. You also need to make sure that when you're getting that 25 yard zero that you're not getting it with an arc as such that that 25 yard zero is on your second crossing of your line of sight. It needs that 25 yard zero must be on the first cross of your line of sight. How you would actually figure out which way you have it zeroed at 25 yards, being on the way up or on the way down, is to move forward of the target. I mean, you could do it at 100 yards too, but if you if you sight in at 25 yards, uh, take cut that distance in half. Aim at the same point of zero you had, and the bullet should hit high. If the bullet hits low, you're on the way back down. You're on the second cross of the line of sight, so you need to readjust. Uh, it, it's a quick, cheap way to zero a rifle. It By cheap, I mean not cheap as in... Uh, not cheap as in generic, but cheap as in... Uh, your accuracy will be much greater at 25 yards because of how close you are than it will be at 100 yards and there's less variance in your body motion and stuff like that. Zero and at 25 yards, I, I, I begin to zero every gun at 25 yards and then I move out. Uh, uh, just quick note, this diagram is not an accurate depiction of any known rifle, it's just it, the lines are drawn so you can understand. Uh, the concepts and what happens and all the the factors that you're going to have to calculate later if you truly try to do this math by hand. Uh, as you can see there you got your line of departure that's the arc on the gun. Uh, if you look to the left of that picture you'll see the sight height. That is the difference between the scope you're looking through and the bore of the rifle. The bore of the rifle is going to be considered uh, where the bore actually sets is going to be considered our level line to our target. Uh, the sight height is the, the height of your scope rings and the width of the top of the barrel and half the width of the scope, that's your sight height. Uh, as you follow on to the right in that picture, you're going to see the mid-range height. The mid-range height is where the bullet is going to, because of the arc, that's the highest point in the arc or the flight of that bullet because we don't have it horizontal, now we have it tilted back. Uh, so that mid-range height is going to be that when I said zero oh, at 25 yards, that's what you got to make sure that you're not getting. That's what you need to make sure you are getting when you're zero at 25 yards, and you're not getting the second cross of the line of sight. Uh, the bullet tra trajectory is going to be based on the velocity of the gun, the ballistic coefficient, the sectional de density of the bullet, how fast that bullet is going to arc and come back and what kind of effect that gravity and speed and all that are going to have on the bullet. Uh, your zero is where the bullet's going to cross your line of sight for the second time. Uh, kind of you look at that and you understand what's going to happen. You've got that, you know, the arc which is the line of departure of your, of, of your gun and then you got your bullet tra trajectory. Now if you look at your line of sight because of the line of departure that bullet <clears throat> is going to leave the barrel and cross your line of sight. Gravity takes over, well it took over the minute the bullet left the barrel, but gra as gravity pulls that bullet back down to earth and overcomes the 
arc that you have put on the bullet, that bullet's going to come back down to earth at that same 32 feet per second rate. There's no way around it. And it's going to cross your line of sight again. That second cross of your line of sight will be where the gun is zeroed. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you're trying to, and by zero, I don't mean, now that could be where you effectively set your scope for, but the point of zero is also in any range you're going to shoot. If you were trying to shoot 300 yards, you were trying to effectively re-zero the gun at 300 yards by putting the correct amount of arc into it. So, if you've got a gun zeroed at 100 yards, you're going to have a specific arc on that gun to have the bullet cross that target at exactly 100 yards. So if we're going to move it back and try and <clears throat> if we're going to move it back and try and have the point of zero at 200 yards, make a 200 yard shot, shot, you are going to have to introduce a steeper line of departure or more profound line of departure to get that bullet to arc to allow you to make the bullet travel effectively to that 200 uh, 200 yard point. Uh, so the more more degrees we give the gun, which again is known as minute of angle, go ahead and check out the other video, the further we can shoot accurately. Uh, like I said, I'll have another video on figuring out external ballistics and using simple ballistics programs and computers to uh, figure out how this all works. Uh, don't overcomplicate it, just like in the, in the minute of angle video. If you try and add too much to it, to just understand the basic principles, you'll, you'll confuse yourself. All you have to understand is that when a bullet leaves the barrel, it absolutely always falls at 32 feet per second. Always, always, always doesn't matter. Uh, the next thing you understand is how you overcome that. You overcome that with speed or velocity. The faster you throw the bullet, the further it will go in the time it takes that bullet to travel that 32 feet per second to the ground. The next thing we use to overcome the effects of gravity is arc, or minute of angle. So the more arc you put on the gun, the further the bullet will go before it gets back to earth. So understanding that by adding that arc to the gun, or the bullet, what you will effectively do is make that gun, uh, that bullet travel to the ground where you want it to. Uh, appreciate you watching. I'm Mac with Double Tap Shooting. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share this with your friends on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. I uh, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments. I, uh, I would, like I said, I would suggest you go back and watch the, the Minute of Angle video and uh, look for the other videos on you know calculating ballistics that I'm going to get into. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Have a good day.